We made plenty of North Korean clips and we kind of have an idea on what is going on over there. But in this clip, we want to introduce you to another country, a country known as North Korea 2.0, Turkmenistan. Turkmenistan is not a small country, it's actually fairly big in Central Asia. And even with all that, it's not really well known. And if you ask any normal Joe, they probably don't even know its existence. The capital of Turkmenistan is Ashgabat, which is literally on the border of Iran. The biggest border this country shares with is Iran and Uzbekistan. And on the other side, it has a border with Afghanistan and Kazakhstan. You might think that the Caspian side of this country is like Iran where it's jungle, but it's not like that. The eastern part of the Caspian is actually a desert, and most of the country is actually a desert. And in the middle of it, it's the biggest desert called the Karakum Desert. There is a very important river in the northern part of the border called Amudarya. Turkmenes have been living here for a long time, but the name of this country actually came about when the Soviet Union was formed. This section was taken by the Tsar Russian and it was eventually part of the Soviet Union. Just like the Caucasus, this section had a lot of natural gas, so it was very important for Moscow. This part of Central Asia was actually very habitable because of these two rivers called Amudarya and Sirdarya. But since the Russians wanted to exploit the farming in this area, they went overkill with it. They created so many water channels in this area that it literally dried up the Aral Lake. We have plenty of lakes around the world that dry up, but not like the Aral Lake. Like in Iran, we have the Urumiya Lake, which is drying up as well. And they do this to get more water out of them, but it backfires and destroys the lake itself. When Turkmenistan was finally independent after 1991, when the Soviet Union collapsed, they announced that we don't have anything against any country and we want to work with everybody. And anybody that wants natural gas, they could buy it from us. Turkmenistan has a lot of natural gas. It's actually ninth place in the world for the biggest. It has a very low population as well, about 6 million people. When you look at the amount of wealth, the population and the area it's located in, you would think the country is like Kuwait. But something extremely weird has happened in this country. Instead of being a very wealthy nation, it's one of the poorest countries in the whole world. And just like North Korea, most of the population is starving. The second president of Turkmenistan, which is the current one, named Korban Goli Bordi Mohammadov, is kind of a dictator because he has been the president since 2006 after the first president died. The name of the first president was Safar Murad Niyazov and he also gave himself a nickname called Turkmenbashi, which basically means the leader of the Turkmenes. Turkmenbashi is obviously the dictator of Turkmenistan and not only in the state's capital, he has a big statue of himself made of gold. He also has a statue of his dog, which is pretty close to his own statue in the capital. In the year 1999, Turkmenbashi orders watches for the entire population. But it's not actually a nice watch. It looks like this. It has the flag of Turkmenistan and the face of himself on there. When Niyazov was the president of Turkmenistan, Westerners would call this nation a fascist state that separated from communist Soviet Union. Just like Kim Jong-il, then later on Kim Jong-un, Turkmenbashi fed a lot of lies to his people while he was around. Lies that were pretty funny if you think about it. Like he would say, we've been here for 5,000 years and this is the first time that we have Turkmenistan as a country. And what he means is that before him, there was no Turkmenistan. And he is right about that. Everywhere you go in Turkmenistan, you'll see a huge portrait of the president. 
When you go get your driver's license in Turkmenistan, there are some questions in the writing test that is dedicated to the Turkmenbashi himself and you have to answer those correctly for you to get your driver's license. When Turkmenbashi becomes the leader of Turkmenistan, he changes the name of the months. Like January is changed to Turkmenbashi, which is the leader of the Turkmen himself. February turns into Baydak, which is the name of the Turkmenistan flag. March is Nowruz, Persian New Year, which a lot of people in the Middle East and Central Asia celebrate. April is changed to Qurban Sultan, which is Niazov's mother's name. Either way, he changes the name for every month. Let's go back in time to see how Turkmenbashi grew into power in this area of the world. Niazov was always part of the Communist Party of the Soviet Union in Turkmenistan before it collapsed. You could say he was a very powerful man during Soviet era because he had control over the natural gas in this part of the state. When the Soviet Union collapsed and 15 republics dissolved from it, Turkmenistan is one of them. But who's the most powerful man in that area of the world? Someone that has natural gas in their hands. The countries bordering Turkmenistan, except Iran, none of them have a good amount of natural gas. Niazov closes the borders of this country, oppresses its people, doesn't allow any country to invest in it. And natural gas, which is the only income for this country, is monopolized and it's all in his hands. The people of Turkmenistan cannot say anything. Everything is in the government's hands. Radio, television, jobs, nothing is private. After North Korea, the worst internet in the world belongs to Turkmenistan. Obviously the whole country doesn't have access to the internet, but a small amount of people in the capital of Ashgabat have access with a lot of filters added on. When you look at the street of Ashgabat, you're reminded of Pyongyang, North Korea. Very wide streets, but nobody's there. Maybe every 5 or 10 minutes, a car passes by. Turkmenistan doesn't have a lot of water, but not in the capital itself. All the water in the country is brought here, and it's not used for the people. There's more than 1,000 fountains that use all this water. A lot of weird things are illegal in Turkmenistan, like you're not allowed to play video games whatsoever. Makeup itself is illegal, and if you're caught with it, you can go to jail. You can have long hair or long beard. This law is only for men, obviously. Even though the leader of Turkmenistan loves dogs and he has plenty of them, it's illegal for the citizens to have dogs. And his excuse is that the people don't know how to take care of the dog and they smell bad. So it's better if we make it illegal and I can only be the one that has it. Another interesting thing that Niazov did is that he got rid of the Cyrillic alphabet and replaced it with the old school Farsi and Arabic alphabet. Something that no country in Central Asia has been able to do after dissolving from the Soviet Union. One of the worst things that the leader of this country has done is that the schools are all regulated and they only teach the things the government wants them to teach. And you could say the people are taught things that don't matter so they don't know what is going on in the world. That's one of the many reasons that they could easily control the people of the country because they don't understand what is happening outside the borders. When the leader of Turkmenistan, the new one or the old one, gives a speech for its people, it's actually very interesting to watch. They always tell the people, you live in the greatest country in the entire world, the most advanced country, and nobody can match the technology that we have here today. Of course, the people might believe it because they don't know what's going on outside the country. Talking smack about the government, someone that works in government, or anyone that's an employee of any form of government will go to jail because this country has the most amount of people in jail after the US per capita. When you talk smack, they could give you the label of a terrorist or a spy 
because you're talking smack about the government and that means you're against the regime. And of course, it's not clear when this person will get out of jail. More than 90% of this country is Muslim. But the funniest part is that Niyazov or Turkmen Bashi has announced to his people that he's the new prophet of Islam. And he also tells his people that you have to read the new Quran called the Ruhnama and it has a photo of himself on there. Anybody that asks why we have to read this over the Quran will be executed. We don't know if we should laugh or cry because it seems like 6 million people are taken prisoner or hostage in the country of Turkmenistan and they have no way of getting out. They're not really allowed to leave either to see what is going on and experience outside. After Niyazov died, the new president has went with the new laws that was put in place and he hasn't changed a thing. 17 years has passed and nothing has changed. Not only is Turkmenistan being ruled like the former Soviet Union, but it's being led like Stalin, which is called Neo-Stalinism, a regime that resembles what Stalin did when he was the leader. Since it's still considered a communist nation, the people do get a paycheck, and the average paycheck is about $16 per month. What if you want to go visit Turkmenistan? First of all, you have to get a visa. You might ask how, because it's kind of different than any other country. They'll give you a visa. You're only allowed to go to the capital city of Ishkabad. And of course, they're gonna watch you to see how you act. And it's interesting because it's harder to go to Turkmenistan than North Korea. You're also not allowed to communicate with the locals because you might tell them that the Quran you guys are reading is actually the wrong one and they don't want that. If a tourist doesn't follow the rules here, it's no longer gonna be a three-day vacation. It might turn into a 30-year vacation, depending on how long they wanna keep you there in prison. 